Well, ladies and gentlemen, we have a plot twist. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Ah, it's the transfer window and madness happens. Chelsea have made an offer to Crystal Palace for Michael Elise, the young French right-sided winger, attacker, attacking midfielder, seemingly the profile we need. Well, we do need. We've gone for Ray and Cherky. We've made a proposal. Well, we've made contacts with Ajax and made sure the player wants to go for Mohamed Kudus, a player that we've been speaking about recently here on the channel. And uh, Elise wants to go to Chelsea. He wants to return to Chelsea. Of course, he was in the academy many moons ago. And Chelsea have made an offer for him. Sneaky, sneaky Chelsea. I like it. If you like it, drop a like on the video. Heck, do it even if you don't. Let's get those likes up. Let's get over 2,000 likes. Come on, people. Come on, look at the number of likes. Get it up. And uh, yeah, you're welcome to subscribe if you want to. Only if you want to. Mate. So Elise, apparently has a 35 million pound release clause. Which is pretty wild. This kid has played really well recently. He ended the season really, really well. I'm looking at his understat graphic now. He got uh, 11 assists in the Premier League last season for Crystal Palace, who, of course, were in trouble and had to bring in Wibbly Wobbly Woy Hodgson again to save them from El Relegato. And he got 11 league assists from an expected assists of... Excuse me. Uh, seven. So he overperformed his expected assists by four. Um, which means two things. Either means a, a striker is finishing off a, a really poor chance, or he's pulling out an assist from a near impossible position. That's the one which I choose to believe, ladies and gentlemen. Um, of course, um, Elise used to be at Chelsea, so I don't know if he's got any like romantic connection to Chelsea I doubt it but he met he met look man I I was watched him in the last couple of years and he was really really good in the championship as well um you'd he's a great player you always think oh yeah I'd love him at Chelsea I'd love him you know there's um there's Eze as well but out of the two I always wanted a Elise I always thought he was a great great option he fits the Chelsea you know requirement perfectly because he's 21 years old he's right in the slot for project 2030 for the Chelsea owners he's um he can play in attacking midfield he can play in right midfield 442 or he can play in his predominant position his favored position which is a right winger of course, he's a left-footed player as well. Incredibly talented, shows some amazing flashes and exciting football in the Premier League. And to get for that Palace team in that situation, to get over double, well, in double digits, 11 assists, and to overperform, it's really, really exciting. And he's the kind of player that would probably benefit from um, Maurizio Pochettino. Of course, he's not another French player as well to join up with uh, Nkunku, uh, Gusto and the and the gang and uh, Badia Shiel of course and yeah we're to join like the French the French gang so Fabrice Hawkins um, which is a une, une homme journaliste française uh, he says this Chelsea have made the first offer to recruit Michael Elise the offer is less than 45 million euros including bonuses so at that because if there's a 35 million pound release clause then that probably is they've Chelsea have probably offered slightly more than the release clause I'd have to say the player is seduced by the Blues project in principle he agrees to go to Chelsea even if there are always negotiations wild <laughs> this is why the, the transfer window is really exciting because, you know, stuff happens that you don't know about. And when it comes out early doors, I mean, like, well, out of nowhere, seemingly, it's really, really exciting. Um, so he has got a release clause. Of course, he's currently got a hamstring injury, I believe. So, you know, but you'd be recruiting a player in a position of need. And, you know, you could still, even if you send uh, Ancalo Gabriel away on loan, you've still got Noni Madweke, you've still got Jackson, other players that can play out wide until at least say it's fit, but incredibly exciting. And dude, if you're a 21 year old uh, 
type footballer, like an exciting talent. How could you not be enticed by the Chelsea project with Pochettino, who's notorious for developing young talent in their, you know, 20s, early 20s, even late teens? You know, he'll be looking at Mudrick on the other flank, the same age as him or a year older than him. Um, really, really exciting. Nonny as well, who um, he'll know about from, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming Alise is an under-21s France international. They would have played England. Um, and he will just know Nonny anyway from playing from, well, not from playing in the Premier Well, maybe for the six months in the Premier League. Point being, it's such an alluring project because Chelsea are really investing in a young generation of very talented young footballers and want them to develop together. That in itself is an amazing, alluring prospect for a player like Michael Olise. But you marry that with the fact how the new gaffer, the new manager, is a notoriously good coach for developing young talent. It does just look like a prospect too good to turn down. Like He looks incredible, really. And, um, and also, Chelsea look like they'll be an attacking team looking to score goals. Like It should be fun. And if Chelsea have approached Olise and said, look, dude, we're looking for a white right winger. We're looking for you. And if, if they said to him, we'll spend like, you know, if they spend 30 million on Nico Jackson, he can be a starter. Why not spend 30 million, 35 million, slightly more maybe to get slightly over the, uh, the bar clause for Michael Elise and, um, and uh, tell him, you know, you're going to start, start for us and what he'll be good enough. You know, it's just really, it's really like peculiar and kind of exciting Reports are also suggesting that Manchester City are interested in him, which is usually a good sign, to be honest, and but also a bit frightening because you think, oh, Man City, you know, Man City. And, and granted, Mares is gone, so that is like perhaps the opportunity for, you know, because you'd think Man City would buy like a 60 million wing. I think Mares cost about 50, 60, didn't he? Um, granted, Bernardo was only like a bit cheaper, but he was sort of a, a bit more played centrally. Um, yeah, but I, maybe if Elise thinks about it, like he's already in London, you imagine he's settled in London, Chelsea's not far from Croydon, uh, he's been known about Chelsea, Chelsea's got an exciting project where the youth will be trusted, he'll be developing with young players, there's a decent amount of French players at Chelsea, um, and you know, French speakers, like Pochettino is a French speaker, of course he speaks English, Elise, so he's in been in England for ages but you know he's, he's like homies you know and Thiago Silva can talk to him as well in French so he can understand the the big man probably El Capitan at the back um but just pretty exciting so I, I think maybe even if Man City do make an offer for him I hope I hope he considers the project long term with Chelsea and because with Man City for me we just don't know what Man City are gonna be like when Guardiola leaves I know they're really run club, well run club, but they were really well run for Guardiola. Chelsea are seemingly just trying to get all everything in order to to build the generations to come to develop together. And you know why would you want to leave London for Manchester? Eh, crazy, crazy. You know the shiny lights of Southwest London and gets gets to go back and play with Blue. And I don't know. I feel like if if all else fails, just show them the Calvin Phillips scenario. You know. I mean, if, if Pep Guardiola called up Michael Elise and said, come play for Man City, you'll replace Mahrez, you're going to start every game and you're going to be feeding Erling Haaland and we'll pay you, well, whatever. They probably won't pay him silly money because he's still a young kid, but they'll pay him a lot of money. That would be very hard for a player to say no to. You know, greatest coach working, probably Guardiola, and um, opportunity to just win everything immediately. But they probably can't offer them that. They probably said, look, let's just see what you can do. We'll bring you in. The same with, you know, sort of cover, but... If he feels like he's going to end up like Calvin Phillips, that's like career suicide. Um, so, go Chelsea. Join Project 2030. Join the Blue Co-Revolution. Join Maurizio Pochettino's swashbuckling, exciting, sensational blues. Uh, nine goals in two games. You could be one of those, you know, wingers, forwards linking up with Christo, Nico... Uh, Misha, all the other, <laughs> all the other nicknames. Who else? Raz, although Raz's stock is plummeting pretty quickly at the moment in pre-season, but uh, obviously still time for him to to find his feet in the new Pochettino era. You know, it's exciting, dude. We do need this right, these right footer. So, so what do we think? Let's transition. Let's bring it on down. Let's land, shall we? The three players Chelsea have been linked to and looking at are. Ryan Cherky, another Frenchman, of course. 
Mohamed Kudu is very exciting. And Michael Elise. If we buy... If we buy any of these men... I'm happy as Larry. I am. See Larry? See how happy he is? I'm as, at least as happy as he is. Should we buy one of these three attackers that can play on the right flank is also play in midfield. If you look, they're all the exact same profile. Not the exact same profile. I'm sure they have their own qualities. But they're all like midfield, as in like they will play cam and right wing, cam and right wing, cam and right wing. You know? Then they're all between 19 and 22. So I get why we're targeting all of them. It suddenly looks sensible, Chelsea's uh, <laughs> Chelsea's transfer strategy. It makes sense now, doesn't it? I mean, you could say we, we'd all be able to do the same thing on a football manager save, just search the requirements and you know it seems simple really but it never really seemed simple with Chelsea it just seemed like a circus for so long and now it just seems like horses for uh, horses for horses <laughs> It just seems like horses, you know. Um, other journalists saying, Quel recrutement intelligent, top joueur. He is a top joueur, I tell you. I'd be really excited, man. I, I'm going to put it out to you guys. What do you think? Who would you pick? Elise, Cherky, or Kudus? All of them exciting. I'd be happy with any of them at this point for different reasons. Like the Elise has always been like the hipster's choice in the Prem. Like everyone's like, oh yeah, he's good at Reading. It's really exciting how Palace managed to buy both Eze and Elise. But Elise was like the sort of kind of like sexier signing, like the more like you know uncapped potential sort of thing. So he was always like a kind of like Prem nerd one. Everyone knows about Kudus for you know World Cup goals, you know total football Ajax, loads of um goals as a winger, very very lethal and direct. And Ray and Cherky for certainly this is he said a breakout Ray and Cherky might represent the biggest risk because he's only 19 and he's had a breakout season granted his breakout season was excellent especially as like in terms of creative metrics key passes and stuff but you know a league breakout season you know is a probably amazing player but we don't know yet so let me know who would you preference uh, down in the comment section and I will of course keep you guys updated with this story three videos a day at the moment wild keep up by hitting the bell notifications icon when you subscribe and i thank you for tapping like on your way out if you are yet to do it love you so much i do goodbye